Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we will create a checkout page to receive the shipping information from the customers and finish the payment process with Stripe. But before we get started, a quick shout out to my new supporters on Patreon. A big hug to Anna and to Rebecca. Thank you so much for your big support. I really appreciate it. Okay, and now without further ado, let's dive in. First, a quick demo of what we're going to build in this video. I'm starting with adding some items in the shopping cart. We built this functionality in the last video. So a t-shirt. A mug. And the hat. Then I go to the cart. make it three t-shirts. Now we have a total of five items in the cart and proceed to checkout. This is what we're going to build today. We have your checkout page to add some contact information and the delivery address. The email address is already pre-filled with the email the user provided when signing up to the page, but it's possible to give here a different one. Then the phone number is optional. And then we fill out the delivery address. Then confirm. Then we redirect it to the Stripe checkout page. We can see that the email field is already filled in. Then we add the card information. Here I use fake card details for testing. And pay. Great, and the payment was successful. Let's get started now. For the checkout page, we will create a new table in the database to store the shipping information. So I'm going to my Stripe folder, here to models to by. And add here my shipping info model class. I add here a foreign key relationship to the user. Then I add an email and phone field. The email being mandatory to send the confirmation email, but the phone number optional with blank is true and null is true. Then we have fields for the first name and the last name. The main address field and another optional field for additional information. And then we also have the city and the zip code. And I represent this object in the admin interface with the first name and the last name. Okay, this is the table for the shipping information. I'm also adding an additional table to store the checkout session. I call this class checkout session. And first we have here the checkout ID. Then we have the relationship with the shipping info object. Then I'm adding the total cost of this checkout session. A created property, which stores the date and the time. And the has paid property. So this property will be set to true if the user has completed a successful checkout. Then I add here the meta class to order the objects by reversed created, so the newest one first. And represent this object in a database with the checkout ID, the shipping info, the total cost, the date, the data convert with the string format time method to display in a day slash month slash year format. And also if the checkout was paid. So this is gonna be false or true. All right, let's save this file and register them in our admin interface. So I'm going to admin.py. We don't need to display this user payment table anymore. We created this for our single one-off payment. So I will get rid of this one and add my shipping information and checkout session. Okay, save this file. And now let's do the migration. So pythmanage.py make migrations. pythmanage.py migrate. And start up the server. 
All right. Next, let's create a shipping form. So I'm going to the Stripe folder and create a forms.py file. Here I first import some classes, so the model form, forms, and from models I import the shipping info class. And I create here the shipping form class. And then inside the meta class we add the configuration. So our model is the shipping info class. I want to display all the fields except the user field. We will add the user automatically in the backend. And then we have the widgets. So in the widgets I define here the field type, for example the email input or text input field, and also the placeholder text. Okay, save this form. Now we import this form in our views. So I'm going to my views to py file. So from forms import everything. I also add the login required decorator. This decorator makes sure that the user is actually logged in to access the view. And now I create my checkout view. So this checkout view requires that the user is logged in. Then I create an instance of the shipping form and populate the email field with the user's email address. And then we return the template and pass through the form object. Okay, save this file. And let's create now this checkout.html file. So I copy the name, go to my template folder, to the stripe folder, and add this file. And the code for this file you can grab again from my GitHub repository at github.com slash anyjat slash stripe. Then here in the shop folder, you can grab here the checkout.html file. So I copy the code and paste the code in here. So this is our checkout page with already all the form fields added to it individually. So we have, for example, the form.email, form.phone, form.firstname and last name, and so on. This gives me the flexibility to create a custom layout for this form. Okay, save this file. Now let's add the URL. So I'm going to my URL.py file. Add the checkout path with the name checkout. Let's save this file. And let's add the path to our card page, and more specifically to the checkout total.html partial. So I'm going to my partials folder, go to the file, and here we find the link to proceed to checkout. Okay, save this file, and let's check it out. First, let's add an item to the shopping cart. So I'm going to shop, I add the t shirt. Add to cart, then I go to the cart, then I change the quantity to 3. Ok, let's add another product, the mug, and now I proceed to checkout. Great, and now we are on the checkout page, where we add the shipping information. Let's add now the logic to save this form in the database and redirect the user to Stripe to pay after clicking the Confirm button. So I'm going back to my Views.py file, here to my Checkout view. So if you have a POST request, I grab the filled out form, then check if the form is valid, then I create a shipping info variable and set commit to false because I still have to attach the user to this form. So the shopping info.user property is the locked in user. Additionally, I convert the email address to lowercase and then save this object in the database. Next, I create a checkout session. And for this I create a function and store it in the utility file to keep this view clean. 
I just add this function in here. And first I define the line items I'm sending to Stripe. So here I first initialize an empty list. And then I look through the items in the card. For this we need the card object. So I will pass it to this function. And then we need to retrieve the price ID and quantity for each item. We could also add the price ID straight to the session as well, to avoid having to call the Stripe API here again. Okay, with this the line items object contains a list of our products with price ID and quantity. And now we can create the Stripe checkout session. We add the line items. I define the payment method types. The mode, which is payment. I set customer creation to always. I add the payment successful URL to redirect the user to the landing page after the successful checkout. Let's import setting and reverse. Then also the cancel URL, which redirects the user to our payment cancel landing page. And then I define here also the customer email. So we can pass through the email address from our Django app to Stripe, so the user doesn't have to fill in the email information again. And this email address I pass through this function as an argument. Okay, and then I assign this object to a variable. And return this variable. Okay, save this file. Now let's go back to our view and add those two parameters to this function, the card and the email address. So here I create an instance of the card class. And the email address I grab from up here. All right. But before I redirect the user to the Stripe checkout page, I want to create a checkout object in the database and update the has paid property after the checkout on Stripe was successful. So first I add the checkout ID. Here we created the checkout session and can get the ID from there. So assign it now to our variable. And then I can attach here the checkout session ID. Then I add the shipping info, which is my shipping info object we created earlier. And I also add the total cost of the card. We keep the has paid property set to false by default. And now we can redirect the user to the Stripe checkout page. Okay. Next, I have to modify the payment successful landing page, which is still using the old code. Here we have the payment successful view. We retrieve the customer object from the checkout session ID. But the code for the line items configuration we moved already to the utility file, so we can get rid of it here. However, when the user lands on this page after the successful checkout, I would like to reset the shopping cart. With this code snippet, I delete the session with the card session ID, if this ID exists in a global session. And I also add this code to change the has paid property to true after the successful checkout in development. This should be handled by the webhook on a live site. So I copy this code, go to my webhook function, delete the old code, and paste it in here. Okay, save this file. And now let's check it out. So I fill out the form, then click confirm, and great, I was redirected to the Stripe checkout page and see all my products with quantity listed here. Our email address is already filled in, and now let's fill out the payment details. And pay.
Nice, the checkout was successful and the shopping cart got reset. And now let's have a look at the admin interface. I go to checkout sessions and as we can see it creates here a checkout session with the ID, shopping info and total cost and also the has paid property is set to true. Let's check also the shipping info. It created here also an object with the shipping details. Nice. Now let's test to cancel the checkout. For example, to modify the shopping cart. First, I add an item again to the cart and proceed to checkout. But as we can see, our shipping details are missing on this page. I would like to have this form filled in already if I've provided this information previously. So let's go back to the view. So for now, we simply add the user's email address to the form. Let's check now if the user has already shipping information saved in the database. And if yes, we display them. For this, I filter the shipping info table by the user. And then if we have the shipping information, we populate the form with the data. Else we display the empty form with the email address. And to avoid creating a new shipping info object in the database if the object already exists, I bind the data from the post request to the existing shipping info instance. Okay, save this file. Now let's go back and check it out. I refresh the page. And as we can see, the form is now filled out. Nice. So I click Confirm. I am back on the Stripe checkout page. Let's inspect quickly our database. And as we can see, in a new checkout session, the has paid property is still set to false. Now let's finish the checkout. But let's say I decide now to modify the card and add, for example, more hoodies to this order. I will go back to the shop. This has cancelled now my checkout session. However, we still have the product in the cart. Here I change, for example, the quantity to 5. Then proceed to checkout. My shipping information is already filled in. Great. And click confirm. And we updated the shopping cart. Now with quantity of 5. All right, let's finish the checkout now and pay. All right, the payment was successful. Let's check quickly the database. And we can see the cancelled checkout session is still stored here with the paid false value, but the newest checkout has been paid. Awesome. All right, this is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new, so I can keep this channel going. In the next video, we will add variations to the products, like different prices, images, sizes and colors. I hope to see you there. Until then, happy coding my friends and bye bye for now.